Hi, my name is Todd, and in this segment of Todd's Turf Sense, we're going to be discussing the art of changing cups. Okay, so before we actually head out to the green, we're going to go over just some of the tools that we have in our little tool caddy that we'll be taking with us. Um, for starters, we're going to talk about this. This is what we use for pulling the cups out traditionally or typically you might be able to just go ahead and use your fingers but if there is a cup in there that may be a little tight or if you want to go ahead and, and just rely on this thing that's great. Uh, you'll see we have ours painted painted beaver orange. Um, that's twofold. Obviously we're proud we're proud of our, our beavers and our, and our uh, horticulture and our OSU traditions but also we want to have it kind of a brighter color so if inevitably this thing does get left behind uh, your greens mowers or your, your rough mowers your bank mowers aren't going to find it the hard way you're going to be able to pretty much find that thing pretty easily in a green stand of grass um, from experience along with that we also have a rubber mallet and a cup setter these we'll use for actually setting the depth of our cup and uh, making sure that we have a nice level cup along with that We've got a water bottle. The water bottle is going to get used for the mending process. We also have a couple golf balls. Uh, we can use these golf balls for rolling at our cup. If we feel it's unfair or maybe a potential pin placement, we can stand back from that pin and, and roll a few balls and see how they react to where we may put that pin. We also have a rag. We use this rag for wiping down the inside of our cup and wiping down the flag stick when we're finished. We've got a little bin of soil. We'll use this soil in this um, you can either use a, a small screwdriver or ice pick, they all work just as well. Um, this will get used for the mending process, which we'll discuss. Um, lastly, in, in this particular setup, we've got our a file. This is in case you have any little hidden treasures in your green. Uh, you may hit a rock or something, you might want to just clean up a burr on the edge of your cup cutter. Um, and you'll notice, last thing you want to do is make sure you start with a, a clean surface. Um, along with that, there may be some other items that you may have in here. Um, in my superintendent days, we actually had our, our cup placements on a, on a grid pattern, so the guys would have right in their box with them the actual uh, 8x11 sheet of the pin placements for that day. Um, along with that, you may want to have a two-way radio or a form of communication in there as well, so as a superintendent or a, you know, someone in management needs to get a hold of the, whoever may be changing cups. Uh, you have an easy access to them for whatever reason you may need to get in touch with them. Okay, so you see what we have here. Again, I mentioned some other items that you may have in here, but I just want to mention a few things. Um, try to keep keep your water and your soil separate for obvious reasons. Um, along with that, keep your cup cutter away from your water as well because that will actually contaminate your cup as you're placing it and get it dirty. You don't want that. Um, other than that, feel free to put your items however you want. And here we have probably the most important tool when it comes to changing cups. This is the actual cup cutter. Uh, there's a number of different cup cutter styles out there, um, different companies that, that make them. Um, there's a different types of shells. You can have a scallop shell or a straight shell. Uh, different sharpening options inside versus outside. Uh, it all has an impact and it all will depend on actually what type of uh, root-based medium or, or green-based your, your soil-based medium. So let's go ahead and we'll head over to the green and we'll actually change a cup. Okay, so as we get, as we get out of the cart, uh, if, we ha if we're lucky enough to have a pin sheet or an idea of where that pin's going, we can automatically kind of be sur surveying the green. Um, what I like about the pin sheet is, is that it allows, allows the opportunity to take a lot of the guesswork out of it for the guys that you have and gals that you may have changing cups. Um, my particular pin sheet had our greens broken up into nine different quadrants, and what I liked about that is um, it was basically a, a middle left, middle right, middle middle, front right, front middle, front left, back middle, back right, back left type of thing. Um, we could we manipulated it so we had our nine quadrants, but we could guarantee that a pin wasn't going to be within two quadrants of another pin for at least about ten to two, ten days to two weeks, depending on, on what time of year it was and how often we were changing cups. So it eliminates a lot of those um, traditional pins where guys just kind of seem to to gravitate towards those locations. Um, it makes it forces the actual guy setting the cups to change them, spread them out a little bit. Um, basically it's a, it's, a, it's a good way to guarantee the whole green space is getting used and of course there's going to be areas on your greens where you're not going to be able to put a pin and, and the guys setting cups would hopefully understand that and they can, can, can tend to gravitate towards a, you know, another portion of that quadrant, maybe sneak into another one, but, but the mindset should be there. 
There's a number of different theories and, and mindsets as, as to how we want to set our pins and what's fair, what's not. Uh, the, as many of you know, the USGA does not have an actual recommendation or respect. We could legally put a pin off the screen. We're not going to in most situations. Um, so for good rule of thumb is to keep it a flag stick off the edge, maybe three paces off the edge. Um, if you get into any situations where you have some severe contours on your greens, you want to make sure that you try to keep it fair. Um, rule of thumb, I like to tell my guys if there's a if there's three chances, if you surround the pin in four different areas, you have three chances for a relatively fair putt within three feet, I think that's a, a good rule of thumb. Uh, we can't please everyone and from every position on the green we can't make make every putt fair and easy. So Okay, so first step is we're going to go ahead and we're going to place our cup cutter in the ground. Um, in a golf course situation, if you have a, a, an old ball mark or some type of blemish with, within the quadrant or the area that you want to set that cup, go ahead and, and center the cup cutter over that. That way you can get that out of the way. Um, but again, you want to give yourself about a three foot circle of a good, a good stand of grass, um, not too many ball marks or any other blemishes um, to ensure a, a fair three foot putt. Um, most, most guys, maybe myself excluded, can, can make a three foot putt with no problem. But. <laughs> So we don't necessarily want to cram this into the ground, bash it with any force. If we just set it on there nice and easy, we'll go ahead and start our, our actual process. Um, we're going to pretend for the, the sake of this video that this is an actual golf hole with the fairway and the tee being back in this direction. Um, good rule of thumb is to always get to the point where you're facing your golf hole. Um, and then once we get down to a certain depth, we want to double check, make sure our cup cutter is square. We're still up and down that way straight up and down that way um, and again it's going to depend on the the soil based medium that you have underneath your greens if you have some push-up greens highly unlikely you're going to be able to take a full plug at once so you may have to end up taking two plugs um, here in our situation in any situation where you can get away with it I highly recommend go ahead and taking a full plug we want to center the rate we want to stand over the top of that cup cutter continuously turning it pushing it in the ground um, if you get with your shoulders square over the top of the cup cutter, you'll help get that thing in the ground a lot better. Um, you know, again, it doesn't hurt to stop in the in the middle of, of actually cutting that cup. Take a step back, make sure your cup cutter is still straight, still square. And then a good rule of thumb is to always be facing your golf hole, facing the tee. Some guys will actually have lines on their cup shells, on their shells of their cup cutter. To mark their depths, um, some cup cutters are equipped with an actual depth gauge. Here we, we know about where we're going, so we're just going to go ahead and get down to that depth, which is right about there. Once we get to that depth, we want to go ahead, kind of seal off our cup, spin this cup cutter a few times. Now we're ready to go ahead and pull it out. So we're Now we want to be careful as we're pulling that plug out and as we're actually setting that cup that we're not moving that cup cutter back and forth, side to side, whatever, because we want to make sure that we're continuing to keep that hole circular. Um, you'll notice I'm holding this upright. We want to make sure that when we're carrying this from here to there, we're not going to be dumping any soil on the green, making a mess as we're walking back and forth. So now we've got all of our tools in our little caddy here. All we really need is this. So we're going to walk over 